Have you found yourself collapsing under the weight of criticism and negativity tossed your way? Perhaps harsh words from a loved one cut deep, or scathing comments from internet trolls left you rattled? If you're nodding along, you're not alone. Criticism stings and handling it with grace is a rare skill. But what if I told you there's an ancient philosophy that can transform how you respond to criticism? A philosophy that equipped its followers with an unshakable foundation to deflect even the most brutal attacks. That's the power of Stoicism, and by mastering it, you'll handle criticism like a martial arts master, deflecting strikes. 1. Understand that criticism is often a projection. Too frequently, criticism arises not from your actions, but from the critic's own insecurities and fears. When someone lashes out, take a step back and recognize it may have nothing to do with you. It's their garbage they're hauling, not yours. An insecure person may mock your appearance to feel better about their own. A failed writer might dismiss your novel as trash because they're jealous of your success. A miserable person bathes in negativity, eager to pull others into their darkness. Realize that their words reveal more about their inner turmoil than your worth. Don't internalize poison meant for someone else. Identify those times when the venom has more to do with the attacker's psyche than your own actions. You wouldn't swallow literal poison, so don't consume baseless insults either. Deflect that negativity right back where it came from. 2. Separate the criticism from your identity. Criticism strikes deep because we conflate it with our very identity. We are what we do in our minds, so an insult about our work feels like an assault on our soul. This is a fallacy perpetuated by our egos. You are not your job, achievements, appearance, or any other part of your life open to criticism. A master craftsman doesn't view a flaw in their work as a personal indictment. It's simply something to improve upon. In the same way, see criticism about your endeavors as feedback, not a rejection of your entire being. Focus on the specific item criticized, not your whole self. Separating criticism from your essence makes the word sting less. It's about your painting, not your worth as a human. It's about your job performance, not your value to this world. Distinguish the objective feedback from the subjective judgment of you. Let the former guide you, but never the latter. 3. Find the core of the truth. While criticism is often tainted by the critic's baggage, almost every insult contains a kernel of truth, however small. The angriest diatribes point to something perhaps deeply buried that could use your attention. A scathing dismissal of your novel may speak to real areas for improvement in your writing. Vicious mocking of your social ineptitude could reflect genuine strides you need to make. The loudest, harshest criticism tends to magnify and distort legitimate pieces of feedback. As difficult as it sounds, try to sort out those kernels of truth from the vitriol and contemplate them impartially. Could Sally's cruel dismissal of your predictable plot lines highlight a need to add more narrative surprises? Does Rick's bullying about your physique contain a truth that you've neglected your health? Finding the truth strengthens you against baseless insults while providing constructive areas to improve. Train yourself to digest criticism like a computer virus scanner. Detect what malicious coding exists and remove it while implementing updates and patches where vulnerabilities are found. 4. Keep desire for approval in check. At the root of all criticism is the desire for approval. We want those around us to validate our existences, cheer our successes and embrace our worthiness. This is an empty pursuit that will lead to suffering. You cannot conform yourself into the idealized vision others hold. You can only be you. Naturally, we all want to feel accepted by friends, family or peers, but constantly thirsting for the approval of others surrenders your sense of self and opens you to being crushed by their impossible standards. No amount of achievements or perfection will suffice. Accept that you cannot please everyone all the time. There will always be critics crying for something different. Expect their insults and predictable patterns of negativity. When you release the obsessive need for universal acceptance, the ability to brush off criticism follows. 5. Don't mistake their insecurity for your reality. When harsh judgments sting, it's easy to start believing the insults reflect reality. We think, maybe they're right, 
I am a failure. This is seldom true, as the majority of critics are unhappy people desperate to drag others down. Their depiction is a reflection of their misery, not your actuality. Those hurling insults tend to be mired in their own bitterness and flaws. Their lashing out exists because they cannot handle their own lack of achievement, social struggles, or perceived mediocrity. Your rejection or success represents everything they are not, tormenting their fragile egos. Remember, you are not the person they describe when unloading their insecurity shrapnel. That caricature is hollow, an effigy they bludgeon to feel powerful rather than confront their weakness. Stay grounded in your authentic reality, not their make-believe one. 6. Practice radical honesty with yourself. While most critics are unhealthy voices to ignore, you must also retain the ability to impartially critique yourself. In your personal life audit, be radically honest about your flaws, failures, and areas needing improvement. This objectivity inoculates you against lashing out when others identify your faults. If you remain willfully blind to your shortcomings, any criticism from external voices will devastate you. However, if you've already looked inward and accepted your opportunities for growth, you won't crumple from someone else pointing them out too. The key is to critique yourself like a coach, not an abuser. Analyze with precision and honesty, but without useless shame or self-loathing. Identify areas for refinement, but balance those with appreciation for your efforts thus far. Only by knowing yourself in totality can you withstand the criticism of others. 7. Approach it with humility. One of the biggest hurdles in handling criticism is our own ego. Pride compels us to reject or retaliate against any insults or negative feedback. We become arrogant, brittle masters of our own reality who cannot abide critiques from those around us. This hubris is our downfall, making us formidable foes in our own minds, but fragile shells constantly buckling under contrary perspectives. A healthier approach is radical humility, the wisdom to accept our smallness and limitations in the grand scheme. We are all flawed beings muddling through existence, making inevitable errors. Embrace the humility that you are never above improvement. Maintain the hunger to continue evolving, learning, and illuminating your blind spots. Those secure in their eternal correctness cannot grow. Approach criticism with the humble grace of, perhaps they have a point I should consider. 8. Cultivate an eternal perspective. In the scope of eternity, the petty jibes and barbs hurled your way amount to nothing. The cosmic scale renders even your greatest critics as fleeting spectres, forgotten whales in the endless march of history. All human concerns, even harsh rebukes about your value, are insignificant blips against the vastness of existence. While we cannot completely disengage from insults stinging in the moment, we can find solace in their transience. Give these affronts to your worth the weight they truly carry, which is ultimately none at all. Like clouds passing through an eternal sky, critics come and go, but you remain. Hold an eternal perspective to avoid crumbling under present pains. This slight fracture in your storyline matters not in the totality of your life's journey. As you zoom out, the contempt minimizes against the grandeur of your greater existence. 9. See feedback as a gift. Reframe how you perceive criticism, and you'll discover an unexpected gift. The rare voices offering candid negative feedback about your endeavors provide an invaluable opportunity, one that sycophants and yes-men cannot. They are alchemists, highlighting areas for growth. Those showering you in compliments and unwavering praise are liars poisoning your ability to improve and excel further. A torrent of blind approval stunts people, making them complacent and unable to course correct. It's the tough love that forges mastery. The smartest people understand that critique, however harshly delivered, presents an aperture into enhancement, a way to hone their craft or better themselves. Greet it with appreciation for the vulnerability required to pinpoint your flaws. Use it as fuel for your continued ascent. 10. Don't get emotional. Respond dispassionately. When criticism strikes a nerve, the temptation is to react emotionally and lash out, you want to spit venom back, trading insults in an escalating volley of rancor. This achieves nothing and absorbs the poison of the original criticism, turning you into a vessel of negativity. The stoic way is to respond dispassionately, 
without emotional charge, hear the critique coolly and acknowledge whatever truth exists within it, no matter how crudely conveyed. Then move forward putting it to use or discarding it without drama. Getting emotional simply magnifies and propagates the negativity volley. It's a self-inflicted wound compounding the original criticism. Stay grounded and rational, using logic to decipher what merits exist without retaliating. Argue dispassionately if needed, but avoid useless emotional conflicts. 11. Draw power from resilience. The ability to stay steadfast amid a hailstorm of criticism is a superpower to be cultivated. Like a boxer taking body blows, those who can withstand negativity and keep standing draw power from the onslaught itself. Their resilience buffers them. With each insult you endure stoically, your fortitude grows. The barbs that once penetrated deflect off, strengthened poise and perspective. You become more grounded in your value, able to let howling gales of negativity blow past without uprooting you. Negative criticism benefits the resilient by challenge testing their foundations. Use it as weight training for your inner core. With each bout survived, you emerge tempered, stronger, and able to handle more intensity. Draw power from this forging process and seek out criticism to surmount. 12. Put it in perspective with mortality. When criticism feels crushing, put it in the context of your mortality. In your final moments, as you look back on life, how much will these insults and attacks actually matter? The criticisms that now loom so large and cause anguish will seem inconsequential when time has passed. All human endeavors pale against the inevitability of our limited existences. Art, achievement, wealth, all eventually scatter into the ether of history's forgotten detritus. With that sobering perspective, how much gravity do these petty critiques truly carry? Of course, in youth, these digs sting and seem significant. But if you stay present with the reality that each of us will face death, such minor pains become farcical background noise. Value your limited vitality too much to be derailed by vapors of negativity. Put it in the context of your mortality. 13. Look for growth, not ego validation. Often we get riled up by criticism because we're seeking external validation for our egos. We want the world to endorse our talents, looks, achievements, etc. But that quest is endless and will lead to suffering. Instead of taking criticism as a slight against your ego, view it as an opportunity for growth. Look at the feedback objectively. Is there something you can improve or a blind spot you missed? Approach it with curiosity, not bruised pride. Caring more about your development than ego stroking will make criticism a tool, not a threat. 14. Don't take things personally. It's easy to make things personal when someone critiques your work, behavior, or character. You start thinking, they're attacking me as a person. But often, whoever is dishing out the criticism likely doesn't know you deeply at all. Their comments are not a personal affront on your whole being, just their limited perspective on one aspect they disagree with. Separate the feedback from your identity. You aren't defined by a single project, decision, or personal quality. Don't take things as a personal indictment of your total self-worth. Have the perspective to compartmentalize. 15. Be the critic first. One of the best ways to diffuse the power of external criticism is to preempt it by being very self-critical first. Get in the practice of routinely and ruthlessly analyzing your own efforts, decisions, work output, etc. Look at it with an impartial and harsh lens before anyone else can. That way, when critics do inevitably pipe up, you've already pre-admitted the shortcomings to yourself. Their words won't carry the same punch if you are already aware of what needs improving. By being the initial and toughest critic on yourself, you remove much of the sting of when others do it. At the end of the day, learning to handle criticism with stoic poise is one of the most valuable skills you can cultivate. The world will always provide a steady stream of negativity, doubters and naysayers, but you don't have to be imprisoned by their attacks and toxicity. Follow the timeless stoic practices, maintain perspective, analyze criticism impartially for truth, stay grounded in your sense of self beyond insults, and approach it all with humility and resilience. Those secure enough to withstand the storm of criticism will go further than those brought down by the winds of negativity. 
Be the towering oak that doesn't shake in the hurricane. Be the stoic master deflector. If you have made it this far, comment down below with the word 100% to confirm that you have received the knowledge from this video. For more interesting topics, make sure you watch the recommended video that you see on the screen right now. Thanks for watching.